Yeah, all right, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for the organizers for the opportunity to talk about these works uh, that I started during my first postdoc in ICTP, like two years ago, more or less, but then I moved it to Dresden, and then finally I'm in the, uh, Augsburg. Uh, recently I moved it to Augsburg. So for that reason, there's three uh, affiliations. So basically, uh, the idea of this work, it's, um, I think, fits well in this uh, session. Uh, fits well in this session. So the idea here is to, um, we want to analyze uh, large data sets, okay? More specifically, uh, physical data sets uh, with the goal of extracting information, some kind of information, okay? Some useful information. More specifically, we want to uh, give a data set. Uh, I don't know if it's not working, I think. Okay, now it's working, yeah. yeah. I mean, giving a, a data set, right? A, a, let's say a table with zeros and ones. We want to uh, characterize a phase of matter in their transitions, right? So this is the goal. I think it was already motivated very well in the previous talks. Uh, and here, just to mention, like the pioneer work is in this direction, right? So basically, um, there are these works that was also mentioned. Uh, also, the, this nice work here by Lei Wang, uh, that he uh, used an uh, unsupervised approach to do this, uh, right? They, they use this uh, principal components analysis. And the basic idea is that we have these uh, data sets that lives in a high dimensional space, right? And then they try to project this data set in a space of two dimensions, okay? And then try to see some structure in this data set, okay? So here, for example, in the order phase of the 2D Ising model, we have the two clusters when the system enter in the uh, ferromagnetic phase, right? So this way you can, uh, and in, in the disorder phase, you don't have this cluster structure, right? So in this way, you can characterize the, let's say, the, the phase of matter, like looking at the structure of the data set. So but here you want to do uh, something a bit different. Uh, so here you want to try to learn something about the system, but without doing any kind of dimension reduction, right? So you want to look some, um, uh, features of the data set that don't require, uh, like that in principle, um, a, a dimension reduction. And more specifically, and this is uh, the title of the presentation, we want to look this intrinsic dimension, right? So the basic idea, so let me try to explain what is this intrinsic dimension in a more intuitive way, right? So the basic idea is that real data sets has a structure, right? So, so here I, I, I just uh, uh, show a, a, like a data set that I, I create myself, so it's a synthetic data set, right? So, so then the basic idea is that this data set, despite it's, it's described by three coordinates, right? So despite it is embedded in three dimensions, right? So the, the idea is that we can uh, lay down this data set in a, in a manifold that has dimension equal to one, right? That has an effective dimension equal to one, okay? And this dimension we call intrinsic dimension, okay? So basically, you can see, you can say that in an intuitive way, you can say that the intrinsic dimension measure like the, the, the number of uh, uh, degrees of freedom, coordinates that you, need, that you need to describe our data set. Okay, so this is the, the basic intuition. And let me give you another intuition now uh, about physical data sets, okay, so classical data sets. So here it's like uh, I sample a partition function of a classical system, right? So here's a three spin XY model. Okay, so this is the Hamiltonian of the system. Super bad, the laser, but. So but the, the idea is that I sample this partition function, like, it, uh, so it's just three spins, okay? So we still can visualize this data structure, right? Uh, at t equals zero and a t, uh, very large temperature. Uh, and basically, uh, for t equals zero, we have the, uh, so basically the, 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 the correlation between the coordinates are very strong, right? So in such a way that the, we have this uh, data set that has an intrinsic dimension equal to one, and in the other extreme, we have uh, uh, the, the, the data set has an intrinsic dimension equal to three, okay? So, but this is super simple. It's just, uh, let's say, a uh, three, three uh, spin uh, XY model, and we want to, of course, uh, try to estimate the intrinsic dimension of uh, many body uh, data sets, okay? Data sets that of, uh, physical data sets of a system that has a large number of particles. So this is the, basically the outline of my talk. So I want to briefly descri describe how we can uh, estimate the intrinsic dimension okay, of a uh, many body system. Then I want, I want to describe how you can define quantum data sets. Okay? This is related to quantum Monte Carlo simulations. And finally, I want to show some results uh, about the intrinsic dimension uh, 
of data sets that are generated in the vicinity of quantum phase transitions, right? Different kinds of quantum phase transitions. All right, so, <clears throat> yeah, so, so the problem of estimating an intrinsic dimension, it's, uh, I think it's a field by itself, so there are a lot of people working on that, so it's not a trivial task. And here we use uh, an estimator that is called, uh, that belongs to a family of estimators that is called nearest neighbor, a Bayesian estimator, okay? And the basic idea of uh, these methods is that the intrinsic, dim intrinsic dimension is related to the statistics of nearest neighbor distance in configuration space, okay? So I will tell you what we need to do to estimate the intrinsic dimension, okay? So basically, for each point of the data set, we need to compute the first and the second nearest neighbor distance, okay? And what these people in this paper, they show is that the uh, probability distribution associated to this quantity mu, okay, that is basically is the ratio of the second and the first nearest neighbor distance, okay, is given by this formula, this simple formula, okay, this Pareto distribution. Um, and so then we can do, we can compute, we can use this formula, right? Basically, we just need to compute this distance, giving a data set, we compute this distance, and then you compute the empirical uh, distribution of mu, right? And then you fit this formula. Okay, so then you can, you can compute the intrinsic dimension. So this is the basic idea. We did that for the, the, the simple case that I showed before, the three spin uh, 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 XY model, and then it, it matched with the intrinsic dimension. In other case, you can also have, can have an intuition about how is the intrinsic dimension of the system, so you can check if the, the method, that the method gives the right results. But in general, it's super, we don't know how is the intrinsic dimension, so it's difficult to benchmark, but then this is the idea, right? We want to learn something new. All right, so then the idea now is to compute the intrinsic dimension of quantum data sets. And how, how you define quantum data sets? So basically, so these are also, uh, let's say, partition function data sets, okay? So data sets that you compute from a, what, a quantum partition function. Right, so you have an operator here. Oops. Uh, so that has like at least two terms that doesn't commute, right? So you, it's, uh, you have to write this in a way that you can uh, write this in terms of classical variables, right? Uh, write this in terms of zeros and one. And what we do is exactly what we do in quantum Monte Carlo simulations. We map the, the, the quantum, use a quantum to classical mapping. So there are different ways to do this. Uh, so basically here we use uh, both path integral, quantum Monte Carlo, and a, 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 a quantum to classical mapping that is related to the path integral uh, approach that is called the stochastic series expansion. Okay? And the basic idea is to split this, uh, let's say, uh, this exponential, right, in, uh, in, in, term, in small terms, right, that depends on our imaginary time, right? So then you can, uh, so our 1D system, so if you have a 1D system, the 1D system can be seen as a 2D system, right? And then now you have uh, zeros and ones. Okay, so now you can uh, define a quantum data set and see how this data set, uh, all right. So this is what you did, okay? So basically we defined two kinds of data sets, okay? So one, the first data set contains just a single, single slice of this path integral. Uh, and the second kind of data set contains a certain number of uh, slices. okay? So basically the, in, in tau direction, so this tau direction, this scale is as beta, right, uh, times the number of particles, and we want to, to go to the ground state, so this beta is very large, okay? So then we define a, a certain set of states. So then we can define a data set, and then we want to study, actually we want to study two features of this data set. The first one is this intrinsic dimension that I explained before, but there is also this quantity here that I will try to explain better, but the idea is that this quantity is related to the statistics of distance, okay? This local distance in configuration space. Yeah, okay, that was exactly what I said. So then what we did is like we explored that. So we, we studied like the behavior of the intrinsic dimension across different kinds uh, of uh, quantum phase transition, right? The quant second order phase transition, but also BKT transition that was uh, shown in the previous presentation by Daniele. Uh, so this is what I will show now, right? In this time that I still have. So now, now it's more like discuss, I will try to highlight some aspects of our results. Of course, I won't be able to enter in all details, but you have, I will be happy to discuss with you later. Okay, so let me show, uh, I think this is one of the key results that will be served is that uh, 
So here's the, the quantumizing model, 1D quantumizing model, okay? So H is the transverse field, and at one you have a quantum phase transition, right? So what we observe is that we always have a minimum of the intrinsic dimension as we approach this quantum critical point. So this is one aspect. The, the other aspect is that this minimum shifts towards the, the quantum critical point as we increase the system size, okay? So this is uh, what we observe for physical quantities, right? So we observe this uh, size scaling, right, of the system. So you have a correlation length that diverge uh, close to the, to the, the critical point, where for a finite system, you see this, this divergence uh, before the transition, right? So for that reason, we have this scaling. And then, okay. and then another interesting thing is that this scaling behavior can also be seen in quantities. This is not the intrinsic dimension, this is delta one, is as, as a quantity related to the statistics of distance, right? So here, basically, this delta, so basically, you can compute the probability distribution associated to the, to the statistics of distance, and then you compute the variance of this. So the delta one is exactly this variance. So then you show that uh, this variance uh, shifts as well. So it, it, it's also characterized the transition. We, can, we also did that for the, uh, to the BKT transition of the 1D XXZ, and basically you have, the, essentially you have this, the same results as before, okay? So we have this minimum of the intrinsic dimension close to the transition, this minimum shifts toward the critical point, and also have the peak of this delta one. All right, so the third example, I won't enter the details, but the only difference of the third example uh, is that uh, we observe, so we also observe, a, so here is more difficult to do the calculation because it's a 2D system. Okay? Uh, so but the only difference here is that uh, this delta R1, that is this variance of the statistics of distance, has uh, an extensive behavior inside the order phase. Okay? Uh, I will be happy to give more details about this, but uh, now we've come to my conclusion. So I think this is the main point. Uh, of course, there are small details that I would also would like to highlight here, but I think the main point, is, the main point of this work is that, that we observe that uh, generic features of raw quantum data sets, like for example, this intrinsic dimension, this delta one, uh, exhibit scaling behavior in the vicinity of quantum critical points, okay? So I think this is, in, in a sense, it's like a unsupervised learning, a way to unsupervised learning quantum phase transition. Thanks for your attention. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, we have time for a few questions, and uh, uh, let's, oh, sorry, let's begin with uh, somebody in the back. Hi. Is there any physical reason for uh, the minimum uh, of the ID close to the yeah. phase transition? Mm -hmm. You didn't mention, but it seems quite, uh, Yeah, you know. so, so I don't have, a, a, let's say, an intuitive uh, explanation for the minimum. So the basic idea is that you try to, to explain why ex the, the increased dimension have this scaling behavior, right? And the basic idea is that uh, somehow you can argue that uh, here. So you can write the intrinsic dimension as this, like, in an approximate way as the, let's say, the log of distance, R2 and R1. And in certain cases, you can show that this scale is as the correlation length, right? So, so then, of course, the correlation length diverge in the critical point, so then would explain the minimum. Okay? Uh, but I don't have a, a, like a uh, say an intuitive uh, picture for why the minimum yet. Okay? So this is something that I'm always thinking about, but I still didn't find a, like the, 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 the question for your, the answer for your question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering, how would this generalize when you have a uh, sign problematic uh, with, uh, states? Yeah, right? we're investigating this now. Yeah. Because it's not clear how to yeah. do so this yeah. for one. So the, yeah. the question is if, if you still can extract <laughs> physics uh, when you have sign problem, right? Because when you have sign problem, you sample with the the modules, right, of the probability distribution, and then you, are, you, you compute these quantities, right? So, so the question is if you st still can, let's say, learn something about the, the transition f with these quantities, even when you have sign problem. So this is something that you are looking at at the moment. So I hope next time I'll be able to discuss about this. Um, when you choose the distance between the the neighbor distance, can you take another uh, other kind of parameters? So the distance divided by the other kind of, like in cows relating with the... So you mean other, other kinds of uh, distance, you mean exactly. other metrics? Exactly. Yeah, you can. Uh, or, or basically my question is why you choose this? Uh, it's, 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 it's clear, it's intuitive, but there would be a physical reason to choose this? 
or, or, yeah, or you can take another. I mean, you, you have to choose a metric, right? You have to choose a distance, right? A proper distance. Uh, so there are other, uh, even better. Than, so we basically use like a conventional, um, conventional distance, like Euclidean distance and Hamming distance. But in principle, you can define your distance in a different way. Um, and this, this can be useful in certain cases. So yeah, so you can, you can use other metrics, yeah, it's possible. But it should be a proper one. So. I also have a quick question, if I may. Um, so when you defined this, um, this intrinsic dimension, you looked at nearest neighbors in your, uh, in your system. And I think all the systems that you looked at were all nearest neighbors kind of models, right? Uh -huh. So what happens when you go to longer range type of models? Do you need to account for longer, like next nearest neighbors or further yeah. interactions <clears throat> or yeah. what do you think? I, I don't think so. I think like at least close the transition, like, like if this long range uh, model has a transition, like a phase transition, you still be able to see similar results uh, so, because like here I talk about distance in configuration space, right? So there is distance in, uh, and this distance in configuration space just depend on the correlations of the system, right? On the, let's say, nearest neighbor correlation, two body correlations or three body correlations, right? And like for the long range, system with long range, uh, I mean, if you are inside a phase, like the, the, the way that the, the correlations uh, behave, right? Uh, like that, uh, with system size, it's similar to the two body, right? Uh, Depending if it is the same phase, right? So, so my impression is that no, uh, it will be similar results. Okay. So, if there's no no other questions, then I will still have one. So it's it's it's, it's very interesting. But what uh, I'm not sure, maybe you you can answer, uh, is is the following. So it, it seems like there's a couple of elements here, right? You could you know there is this kind of topological manifold or something like this, and then there is the numerical approximation of it. Or at least approximation of some, uh, you know, measure of, of that, right? So it's n not clear what is, you know, fundamentally physical and what might come from, let's say, just the way you estimate this uh, intrinsic dimension. So is there some sort of understanding, you know, what physically this, uh, you know, well, let's say, what should be the intrinsic dimension for for some specific uh, quantum state? Is this even an invariant quantity? If I, for example, change yeah. the the data, if I don't, let's say, use uh, the, the same kind of, you know, protocol for using Monte Carlo. Is the intrinsic dimension yeah. even invariant, or, or maybe yeah, a minimum it's of a, it? It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, in principle, the intrinsic dimension, I mean, the, the intuition is that it's the minimum number of, uh, let's say, coordinates that you need to describe your data set, right? But the problem is that it's to make this intrinsic dimension super hard, right? And so this method that you use, it's, it depends on the scale that you, you <coughs> measure the intrinsic dimension, right? And the scale is settled by this, the typical R1 and R2, right? This typical distance, right? So basically, all the results that I show change with the number of points that I have in my data set, right? So basically when I increase this number of points, increase of this mo number of Monte Carlo uh, snapshots, basically I change this uh, scale, right? Okay. So basically uh, I change this average distance, right? So basically the intrinsic dimension, uh, so I think, I think what you are measuring here is uh, not exactly, this is what I said at the beginning, it's not mm -hmm. the number of, uh, uh, let's say, degrees of freedom uh, or coordinates, uh, mm -hmm. But I think the scaling is what is important here for what I show, right? This kind of scaling, what is interesting, at least but for me. But is there a way to say directly related to, you know, let's say in the, di the actual dimension of the space that you're, that you're embedded with, let's say minus some number of constraints that are imposed by the order parameter if, if it exists and so forth? I mean, certain limits, yeah, it's like, like for classical system, like with XY yeah. model, like for very low temperature, you expect that the intrinsic dimension goes to one. Mm -hmm. And you can see that uh, with this, even with this method, right? Also for a large temperature, you expect that the intrinsic dimension scales with the number of sites. So you also see uh, this kind of behavior, right? Yeah, but like in the close the transition, uh, something still, yeah. I think we still have to understand better like this point, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So if there are no further questions, then uh, let's thank Tiago and also let's thank all the speakers of, of the session and uh, we'll have a break now. Thank you.